<sighs> Just the fact that I have to think. I have to think about this movie again. Ugh. Before I actually start into this, thinking about this movie again, I had to move. I had to move my computer aside because, well, yes, there's a lens. There's a flare from the sun not from my window, and it's not being perfect for reviewing a J.J. Abrams movie, but not now. So we'll get to that in. Ah, uh, screw it. Alright, for those of you who had the pleasure of missing this movie in the theaters when it came out, what is Transformers Revenge of the Fallen about, you may ask? Hell I know. Okay, in all seriousness, if I can remember, I don't want to, a group of Decepticons, which by the way, none of them were in the first movie, wait on Earth to hatch a plan to resurrect their leader, Megatron, from the Laurentian Abyss. Which, according to Michael Bay, is the deepest part of the ocean. Why he wasn't melted down in the first movie... ...is the question everyone's been asking since these movies have been made. I don't know. Maybe because Bush was still president. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself, Well, Alex, that doesn't sound too bad. That sounds just like a Transformers movie. You are wrong, my good people. Dead. Wrong. Okay, so what exactly is wrong with this movie? Yes, we all know that, but I'll get back to that later. What's wrong with this movie is that it's 90% humans and 10% Transformers. They're basically the supporting cast in their own movie. Optimus Prime, the supposed hero of these movies, is killed at the 50 minute mark and is not resurrected to the end of the movie in which he manages to kill both the Fallen and Megatron in a minute and 30 seconds. So what do we have instead of Optimus Prime and the Autobots? Well, I'll tell you. We get dogs humping each other. We get Shia LaBeouf's mom high off brownies. We get Megan Fox looking like a whore. We get gremlin robots that come out of nowhere. One of them has a dick for a gun. Farting from Jetfire. Crying from Bumblebee. Robot testicles from Devastator. And of course, the two most insulting, annoying, unnecessary characters ever to be made in the history of film. Skids and Mudflap. These two are so bad, they make you fall in love with Jar Jar Banks. And that's saying a lot. They're more useless than Jar Jar was, they're less funny than Jar Jar was, and half the Autobots don't even know they exist. So what's the point, Michael Bay? What's the point? But to top it off, what makes this so bad is that it grossed $800 million worldwide. $800 million worldwide. <sighs> That's more than, that's more than Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. That's more than Toy Story. That's more than Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol. Movies that actually deserve that money. It's a piece of shit. It is an absolute piece of shit. Zero stars is the rating. Not even half a star. Just zero. I still can't get over the fact how inconsistent this movie is. I mean... Tell me, do you really ha do you hate something that's so inconsistent you can't believe it? Yeah, me too. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.